In this video we're going to have another go with the previous uh, part. Uh, we previously ran into some problems where we couldn't um, get past the web uh, inside the pulley itself. So we're going to try doing this again, uh, but in a more sort of rebuildy sort of way. We're going to re-upload the same step. Let's wait for that to go. Uh, it doesn't mind if they're the same name. It might you might mind, but for us, we'll have two of the same name. Here. Well, you can always rename these later to start one, start two, whatever. Once that little block shows up, it's ready to open. And there we go, the same as before. Shift N, toggle on and off. And then I'm going to inspect again to see a section analysis. And we're confronted with the same thing. Now, I am going to turn on history here. So right click at the very top. And I'm going to lock all these in place because it is easy to shift them by accident. So before I do that, so now step files and all neutral files tend to come in movable. Now uh, you can override that by just grind, grounding. You'll see that show up in history. Nice. Now previously we just emphasized uh, how to move uh, the upper, the, the pointy part, the part of interest of the pulley. Um, this time we're going to go at it a bit differently. Uh, so I've got history turned on. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of some of these fillets. Uh, in the previous video we discovered that I think that they were three and a half. Let me put them back on later. Now what I'm going to do is actually split this part into two. So the body split this blue teal guy and the splitting tool I'm actually going to use this upper inside edge. Now using the thing itself for uh, the move is probably not a bad idea. This gives us a chance to now move the body uh, right over into the into the middle. Move it. So now it can float free of the web. This is kind of good. So let's uh, move it over as far as we can. Well, as is reasonable, maybe. So let's go for you know, minus 40 is too, I would say, too tight. So minus, I'm going to go over 38, minus 38. That puts it more or less in the middle of the two bearings. It's still sitting on top one, but it's way better than it was before. Say OK to that. I'm also going to repeat what I did in the previous video with the move and the phases. I'm going to try and move this web over as far as I can. So let's move that over. Notice we're kind of pulling up that backside a bit, but we're not shifting, importantly, we're not shifting the inside and it will eat that inside surface. So let's go over, I believe last time we went over 15. Let's do that again. Say OK. And we moved, we press pulled this guy down for, OK. So I'm ready here. So let's go ahead here and save this as a ready to stitch or ready to fix. Let's go ready to fix. Uh, when we look in our data panel here, see it's uploading right now and then we have a save point. We can always come back to this. Let's think about that. Nice. So I need to attach these two together. Unfortunately, or fortunately, that means sketch. What component is this? The pulley. Let's highlight the pulley by clicking the little, ra the little radio button. Everything else goes out. You can also right click and isolate if you wish. Hides everything. Perfect. Now I just want to connect these two together. So let's do that. If I open this up, you'll see an origin. Oh, nice. 
and it is centered. Put a sketch on that guy. And I'm going to ask for, I need to project onto it so I can actually sketch from something. So let's go for intersection. So this will, there's two types of things we can use here. We can create a project. If I hover here, we'll see what that does. Projects a silhouette and intersect. Projects the points, model edges, and so on where they intersect the active sketch plane. That's important. So let's use intersect here. I'm interested in probably just this. It doesn't really matter here, but I can do the whole surface and probably these two guys as well. Maybe even the top. No, because we see the bottom of that. So it's all alive. If we hide the bodies, we can see what we've ended up with on both sides. So what I'm going to do here is just add some sketches. So I'm going to go for a curve first. So let's just say a line. Now if we just pull it, it's kind of hard to get it to go where we want. Since there's a line here, it's going to follow that. What we need here is instead an arc. So an S. Unfortunately, I went to appearance there by pressing A. Again, arc. What's wrong with that? Three point arc. It's going to snap to this corner and somewhere down in here. And get, like, was lucky. Got a tangency here. How do I get it tangent up here? straightforward. I just have to put the center of the arc on the edge of the part. Fully defined. Inside here we now have a sketch palette, a sketch. This is fully defined. But no profile, no profiles yet. Let's do another arc. So this arc, three point arc again going to stick it to where I want it to be. Ish. Going to go for concentric. Tangent. And we're back to fully defined. Nice. We also have, if we escape out of that, do we have a profile? Almost. So we might have to fill this in and see how it goes. This might be enough to sort out our problem. So let's join these up. If we connect to predefined geometry, we know we're going to get what we want. And we can see here. We have now a profile. If I if this is all I have though, I'm gonna eventually want to cut this corner off. So I'm gonna continue adding geometry here until I can get some profiles. There we go. Doesn't matter if I have multiples, but I have now what I need. Finish the sketch. First, let's create the join. So I want to sweep these three areas around and I can pick any axis I wish but the inside of this is safe. Right now it says cut. Let's go for join. Perfect. It might hide the sketch. Just turn it back off. If we want we can rename it. Uh, sweep profile or something like that. Or revolve. Get that. Let's see what's going on. And we can do another revolve. Now, for those who like fancy stuff, uh, if the thing you did last is always at 12 o'clock with the right clicks. If you want to be really fancy, you can grab and drag to 12 o'clock. We'll just repeat what you just did. Nice. I want this time. This profile, same axis, just to be safe, and it's a cut this time. Perfect. 
Now, there are fillets on this. In the last video we discovered it was about three millimeters. Let's put a fillet on this guy up here in case there's an unexpected stress rider three. Sure. That's not looking too bad. Let's try unisolating. And there's our part. Nice. Go back to the top. We want to click this to go to the full assembly. So I'll get that radio button. Everybody's happy. We're as far over as we can reasonably go. I don't think it's a big deal to go any further with that pulley. Uh, one other thing we could do is uh, drag some stuff over uh, and shorten the shaft, but that's a redesign of the shaft. And we're just going to steer clear of that for now. And there we go. That is option number two. A more invasive, in a way, way to move that pulley over, but it does go further over towards the bearing center, somewhere in here. We can't go all the way because of the wall, but we can go as far as we can. This, of course, always assumes that we can move the belt on the other end as well. But assuming all that, this is our option number two for shifting. A bit more involved, but maybe worth it. Thanks for watching. Over to you.